QuickBooks Online Advanced for Real Estate Brokers Custom Fields. This is not a video on how to do the accounting for, for uh, real estate brokers. It's a video on how to use custom fields to track some of the non-accounting data that might still make sense to track around the accounting data that, you're, that you have. So let's take a look at my screen. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm already here on the custom fields screen. And again, this is only available in QuickBooks Online Advanced. So if you're looking for this and you don't see it, it's probably because you'll need to upgrade. If I click on the gear icon under lists, you'll find custom fields. And that's how you get there. Now, of course, if this is your first time doing it, you won't see anything created here like I've got. So I'm going to show you how to create a new custom field. And I'll walk through you know, some of the options there. And then I'm going to walk through each of these and how I set it up, the way I set it up, and why I set it up that way. Okay, so first you'll click Add Field, pretty straightforward. You'll name the field, and then you'll choose the type. Either text and number, number only, date, or drop down. The date ones are really slick because they can be used in reports, and you can create date ranges based on proximity to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, to the date that's in that custom field. So very, very cool reporting you can do on this. And drop down list is a great way, for example, to track your agents and associate them with... Uh, you know, with anything, with a transaction, what have you. Once you've chosen a name and a data type, then you have to decide what it's going to be associated with, either a customer or in any transaction or a vendor. In the next part, you'll decide which forms it goes with. So if it's, a, if it's going to be with transactions, then there's a good chance you're going to want to choose some, maybe even all of these forms that you'll be able to associate that custom field with so that when you're entering those transactions, you'll be given a drop down where you can make the choice as needed, right? Um, and so that's all there is to it, really, as far as setting up custom fields. So let's take a look at uh, the ones that I've set up and how they're set up. All right. So listing type. This is a drop down. All right. Single family home or residential lease. Right. It's one or the other. As you can see here, in any drop down list, you can have up to a hundred choices. Right. So plenty of uh, room there. Notice I've associated it with a customer. I do not need this on any sales forms. This is just for me to track listings and the information about those listings in QuickBooks Online. Uh, same thing with the listing price. The difference is this is a numeric field. So in the data type, I chose number only. Right? Again, not going to appear on any forms. It's more about associating the information that I, I'd like to have associated around the listing itself. The URL, so this is really just a text and number field that I created so that if I wanted to, I could drop in the URL that takes you to, let's say, the online video or the online listing, wherever it might be, um, where I can cl click out and look at the information about the listing itself. Again, just handy information to have, and as long as I'm here, it doesn't cost me any extra, might as well put it in there, right? The property description was kind of an experiment, I'll be honest, and this could change, but as of right now, the, uh, the length of the text that you're allowed in a field like this is not really sufficient for property descriptions. We also have here the listing agent. Now this is a great way to track the listing agents. As you can see, I've got a few listed here. So this will become a drop down associated with a customer, but one that I do want available on certain forms, namely a sales receipt or an invoice, because those are the two forms I'm going to use to describe the listing when it's sold and how much it's sold for and so on. And that's how I can associate the, um, the this drop down so I can associate an agent with the listing. And then I can run reports on that. So later on, I can see you know, all the year to date income earned for an agent or whatever the agent earned on that particular listing and so on and so forth. So that's the listing agent. MLS listing number, I set up as a number only, right? And this one I do want on the sales receipt or invoice just so that it's associated with, tra with that transaction might as well. And finally, we have the license renewal date. Uh, this is a date-based field and it's associated with a vendor because as I mentioned earlier, an agent is going to be set up as a vendor because we have to track that for 1099 purposes. And it just makes sense then to have the license renewal date in the vendor's profile. And then we can run reports to see whose licenses are coming up for renewal and then make sure we follow up to make sure that they follow up on getting their licenses renewed so that we don't have any lapses. So that's in a nutshell how you set up the custom fields. Now let's go to reports. Okay, and I'm gonna to go to custom reports. I've created a couple um, to show you. So first let's go to upcoming agent license renewals. 
Okay, and you can see that I've got one because the renewal date is coming up. Today's date as of this recording is March 15th. The license renewal date is March 31st, right? And so that shows up. So this is upcoming license renewals, right? And the, let me show you how this is configured. So if I go to customize and in the filters, it's based on license renewal date. So this is the beauty of these custom fields is they can be accessed and used in the reports. And I mentioned earlier, the date-based fields can be used with context based on proximity to a particular date. So notice this is showing me all the license renewal dates in the next four weeks. Of course, I'd probably set up another report to show me any license renewals that are in the past, right? That haven't, um, or that may have gone past due, for example. And very quickly while we're here, if, if I click on anything off of a report like this, It'll take me straight into the vendor's profile, the agent's profile, where I can edit, and you'll find the custom fields down here at the bottom. And once I, once uh, Josh here confirms for me that he's renewed his license, then I can update this to next year's date on the same day. Next on the reports, we have open listings, right? And so I just put in two listings here just to give you kind of a quick example. Um, on the listing URL, I use bit.ly links because the URLs actually were too long to fit. Um, this, of course, looks like it's going to be something you can click on that'll take you to that URL. It actually won't because this is information coming from a contact-based report. Clicking anything in it, just as you saw a minute ago on the license renewal report, just takes you over to the profile of that element, in this case, that listing. Um, but again, since we have these listings, and we can group things based on the custom fields, such as listing agent. When I do that and click run report, now it shows me all the open listings broken down by listing agent, okay? And there's one other thing we can do because this is theoretically, you know, it's called open listings, but actually it's gonna show everything. What I may wanna do is add one more custom field so that we can ensure that this report then gets filtered and only shows us listings with an open status, right? So let's go set that up. We're gonna go over to our custom fields. Okay, and I'll add a field, listing status. Okay, we'll set that up as a drop down. And simple, open or closed. Right, and this will get associated with a customer because that's where our listings live. Um, I don't need it on a sales form and you can always go back and edit that piece if you need to. All right, so we have listing status. Now let's go back to my reports. I'll go to open listings and I'll click in the first one and edit. Custom fields, when you're looking at a customer are over here in this tab. Listing status, let's say this is open. Okay, back to the report. Grab the second one. And just so we can make sure we know this is working, I'm going to set this one with a status of closed and back to reports. And let's customize this now. We'll create a filter based on the listing status and this should only be open. When I run that, we should see that 10697 SOMA way will be there, the 2210 Jeffersonia way should disappear and sure enough, it does. And now let's go back into our sales and customers area and go back into Jeffersonia Way, edit, custom fields, change the listing status to open, save reports. And I always test these things this thoroughly to make sure it's working the way I expect. Let's also change it to group it by listing agent and I'll just customize this, uh, actually save the customization and basically save the same report. But now next time you'll remember the groupings. The other thing you could do is create one that's not filtered by the status, but rather grouped by the status, right? So instead of grouping it by agent, I can just group it by all the open listings versus all the closed listings. So again, as you build this data out, there's lots that you can do so that you can create these kind of reports that give you a tremendous amount of really valuable information for tracking that non-accounting data that immediately surrounds the accounting data that you have with a real estate brokerage. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, concerns, I'm easy to find, Seth David, nerdenterprises.com. Uh, reach out to me with your questions. I'll be happy to answer them. 
as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, learned something, had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.